I'm Gwen Preston of Resource Maven. I'm here at the Metals Investor Forum in Toronto at the beginning of March, just before the big PDAC conference that will consume us for several days. I'm joined by Peter Ackerley, who's of Erdine Resource Development Corporation, um, ERD uh, is the trading symbol there. Uh, Erdine is a Mongolian explorer, um, so that in itself says that there's a lot for us to talk about right now. Uh, Peter, your team has been in Mongolia for 20 years, really right. long time. Um, Let's set the groundwork here in talking about everybody talks. Of, everybody likes to say that they're in a new district, in a mm -hmm. place that's underexplored. Capture for me a little bit about what, what that means when you're talking about being in Mongolia. Sure. Well, thanks, Gwen. And it's, it's a really interesting area that I love to talk about because when I arrived there 20 years ago, the first thing I recognized was that you had this belt of rocks. It's part of the Tian Shan or Central Asian orogenic belt that goes through the southern part of the country and nobody had ever explored it. There'd been no modern exploration. So here we are with 10, 20 million ounce deposits along trend as you go through China, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and Mongolia had no attention. So we really set our minds to focusing on that area. Right. And over a long period of time, almost a decade, with millions in you know, sort of regional exploration, methodical uh, satellite imagery down to regional streams, mm -hmm. said boot and hammer, we closed in, starting with the 18th largest country in the world on an area that today is a 25 kilometer new gold district with multiple new discoveries sitting at surface high grades that are unlike almost anywhere else in the world because anywhere else they would have been mined out decades ago. Right. And when you talk about um, so high grades at surface, mm -hmm. um, you've got a couple projects that are all within a pretty small area, like you say, 25 square kilometer area. Right. Um, you've got the Alta Anar that's further to the north. The, mm -hmm. the more of the focus lately has been at Bayan Hundi, which is down in the Correct. south. Right. Bayan Hundi started with Gold Hill where you grabbed a, a 4, sample 000. that was 4,000 grams per ton. Mm -hmm. So like, this is truly underexplored and now you've been drilling there for two years? That's right. So yeah. talk about what you've delineated, what you understand about the system there so far. Sure. So first hole in um, late 2015, reported early 2016, was seven meters of almost an ounce of gold, pretty much at surface, top 14 meters. And so from that first hole, we've now drilled 230 holes, largely all in the top 200 meters from surface. Mm -hmm. And 20% of those holes have had intersections of over an ounce of gold. Over and an that's ounce. stretched over a one and a half kilometer trend that mm -hmm. remains open to the south and to the north. We've really started to focus in on drilling off to an indicated level, sort of 20 to 40 meter spacing, the high grade zones that include striker midfield and now north midfield. But looking inward on the deposit, it's morphed a little bit into really understanding those ultra high grade zones. We had a hit recently that was 2200 grams per ton in an area that had already you know, 3200 gram hits, in fact up to 300, and there's good continuity there. So we really feel it's important to the true value of this deposit to understand the size and continuity that affects cap in those ultra high grade zones. So it'll be a, a focus of much of our drilling looking inward at the Bayan Hundi deposit this year. And then what's also interesting is that you're not just chasing structures that carry these incredible grades. They're surrounded by an envelope of disseminated mineralization and all of the gold collectively looks like it has very good metallurgical characteristics. So that works together as a system that's right. much more appealing for a miner. Right. And just a little color on that, uh, we believe there's been two series of uh, alteration or um, fluid events. And the first one was a disseminated, perhaps porphyry or pyrite zone that created the setting for when those fluids came in. Not only did you get these high-grade quartz agillaria veins, the gold effectively impregnated those pyrite uh, nodules and turned them into hematite specularite. So you got this disseminated halo around mm -hmm. the high-grade veins, which gives you a nice 0.3 gram shell around these ultra-high-grade zones over you know, over a kilometer strike length. Right. Uh, so that looks very perspective. Our target in there would be in the million ounce of plus gram, but the sweet spot is four to 500,000 ounces of in excess of four grams, including what we expect to be the re reasonable cap on that uh, high grade. Right, right. Now you talk about this goal. This is, the goal is to generate a, maj a maiden resource estimate for Bayon Hundi, which mm. hasn't happened before, uh, later this year. Um, what I think is an interesting conversation, you and I were having it earlier, is talking about scale given where you are. Mm -hmm. It's remote. It's not actually that remote. There's coal mines, there's paved roads that are not particularly far away because of a push of development. You're not that right. far from the Chinese border. Yep. But it is um, unfamiliar to a lot of other mining companies and it mm -hmm. is somewhat remote. So let's talk a bit about who or what this district might turn into. I mean, there, sure. there's sort of what you're developing now and what that might be and the high grade and the metallurgy. 
and then there's this potential for mm. what else might be there. Sure. So, you know, we, we wouldn't be there, and I think the body of work we've done over the last few years demonstrates that this is likely to be ultimately a multi-million ounce district. You know, what's it going to be? Three, four, five, plus five? It's hard to know. Yeah. But there hasn't been much exploration done. So when you look at what a mid-tier needs, many of them look at wanting to have that high-grade ore body that gives them seven to ten years of very high grades, three to five grams, you know, right. and that can get some of the mid-tiers interested. We're pretty much getting into that sweet spot for the mid-tiers, and they can see that potential around us. So I think some of those discussions could be nearing maturity this year to at least look at initial equity investments from those types of companies. Mm -hmm. I think from the majors, you have to look at it differently. They can see that three to five million ounce. They know it's going to take a long time to drill that out, but those are the types of investments they're making, as we discussed earlier, in the Yukon, in uh, Ecuador. So I think those opportunities are in front of us. You know, and you certainly have had interest from companies. They've, they've come to site. They've been in your data That's room. Right, they yeah. like what. And we'll see those trips continue this year. So I see us as getting through that first dating game, if you will, with some of these companies. And we'll go to the second date this year and have some more detailed visits and discussions. And, you know, I don't feel any pressure to rush into those types of arrangements. I think we have a good shareholder base. We have mechanisms to raise money. I don't particularly want to raise much at these levels anyway, because mm -hmm. all of us in this industry are under pressure right now. So, you know, we can access funds as we need it. We'll begin drilling in um, early April, and right. we'll continue to move through a number of different studies that we're working on. There's some other things in the background that we're quite excited about. So, yeah, we'll just continue to put our heads down, de-risk, and build ounces. Exciting year ahead, lots of drilling, resource update, lots of dating to do, it sounds like, <laughs> and uh, best of luck with it. Thanks, Gwen. Yeah. Thanks for watching.